when social democracy as well as radical leftists are on, on the line. That, of course, is a problem. What we have now, which could build, which could be used and should be used by radical left forces and other forces, is of course the climate movement, which is global at the moment. It's global, we don't know what or how it will develop, but we should be concerned that this movement can lead to something different, at least for confrontation. It can lead very easily to a confrontation to capitalism and or capitalism the capitalist system in several ways. It's difficult to have to create to create a reduction of climate warming without confronting the system, without system change. It's very, very difficult. We can it's still a lot to be discussed here, but it's very, very difficult. With regard to the EU, the EU has taken some environmental steps that I know. Will we got to plastic other issues that I know? But this does not reduce climate warming. The EU is very bad with regard to climate warming. It, it contributes to climate warming. Every year you can see a rise in emissions, in uh, greenhouse gas emissions. And we have to have these emissions down. I know there's a, a deeper discussion tomorrow about this, and I leave some of this for tomorrow. But actually the EU is doing just the opposite. And it's we are really going to, I don't know if the Green Party and the European the radical left parties in the European Parliament can do something about it. Can pressure the EU on industrial policies, on the, uh, on the uh, uh, for example, the fiscal pact, which does not allow for very much input into uh, green restoration, green and transition, not nothing. Very badly, that's going to be very serious. There are other issues that really should be confronted with with regard to EU policies. That is very important. Let us discuss this uh, more tomorrow. But there are also some dangers, of course, I would like to mention. That if the climate movement feels that not enough is being achieved and radicalism is growing, there is, of course, a danger that this could lead to more to more authoritarian, uh, you know, uh, authoritarian by the EU, by EU states, other states, more authoritarian ways of combating the climate. Or, what we, or you could say, any any uh, attempts in democratic ways to forward uh, to forward the climate solution to the climate crisis. So I think that should also be thought about. That should also be thought about. Because what you do at a time when democracy is consistently being undermined, and democracy is actually seen as a threat by capital owners and so on. What, 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 what will happen? Thank you very much.
cet aspect de, de progrès, de gauche, de révolutionnaire, etc. Euh, alors en France, on a eu un petit aspect, parce qu'on a eu un gouvernement de gauche pluriel, il n'a pas fait des miracles, mais il y a un million d'emplois qui ont été créés par la réduction du temps de travail et des emplois jeunes, et puis il y a eu une légère euh, redistribution qui a été faite. Euh, pendant trois ans, on a connu euh, le, une croissance à 3,5%, et euh, à la fin de l'année, l'État se retrouvait avec une cagnotte. Malheureusement, euh, le problème de euh, la social-démocratie traditionnelle, c'est qu'ils font des bonnes choses, mais ça ne dure pas longtemps. Et en 2000, il y a eu un revirage à droite. Euh, on a commencé à réduire les impôts des riches et puis à, 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 à serrer pour les pauvres. Là, la situation s'est inversée. Son panne, euh, la gauche a perdu les élections. Et euh, depuis euh, 2000, euh, à, 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 depuis 2002, à chaque fois qu'on change de gouvernement, à chaque fois c'est pire. Et c'est vrai qu'on ne voit pas de solution, mais je pense qu'effectivement, euh, si on veut sortir de la crise, euh, le seul moyen, c'est une solution de gauche. Alors peut-être euh, s'appuyer sur la réponse politique. Roberto, je m'accompagne après la Adesso io vorrei fare una parafrasare questo uh, nostro tema, che sono svegliato una mattina. Ma questa mattina, dopo gli interventi di oggi, mi chiedo quando ci siamo svegliati. Perché il processo uh, di distruzione del Stato sociale ha cominciato sì, 89 massicciamente, però era previsto dall'inizio e dal dopoguerra, anche fino a che non ci siamo uh, capace di dire apertamente che le, 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 le conquiste sociali che avevamo avuto i 40 anni erano in parte, non del tutto, ma in parte dalla presenza di, da una parte tedesca della DDR e dall'altra parte dell'Unione Sovietica. E questa è la mia domanda. Se è festicciato il, uh, il 1989, uh, no, però nessuno ha pensato che ci rimettiamo tanto del nostro sviluppo e quindi perché erano le sinistre moderate a fare il primo taglio allo Stato sociale e si sono accorti adesso che perdendo voti a, a Pizzeffe che hanno sbagliato e non sanno più come tornare e noi ridotti al minimo la sinistra radicale alternativa come volete non ha una visione e non ha una proposta se non ci sono se non ci sono altri io darei la possibilità ai relatori di rispondere se ci sono altri interventi sì. Okay. Mi sembra che siano state, sia stata messa molta carne nel fuoco, come diciamo in Italia, non so se si dice degli altri stessi europei. 
io passo la parola per intervenire rispetto alle domande che ci sono state o più che altro agli interventi e alle tesi esposte per primo a Michael non mi cade uh, yes. uh, the, the comrade from uh, Austria raised the question about the European Union and say we need the European Union to solve uh, the ecological problems but I think we have to start with looking about what is the European Union and we have to understand that even though the European Union do some good things in putting standards for pollution, lowering, uh, lim putting limits to how much you can uh, put poison in some things and uh, fighting. Well, they do some good things, but the basic of the European system is to uh, build a neoliberal capitalism which works freely. It means free of control from the workers, from the state, and that also, and this promotes growth, and this growth is uh, actually contributing to the climate crisis and to the uh, ecological damage, uh, the lower uh, fishing of, uh, of the oceans and so on. And this is, you have to analyze this, you have to look at what the EU actually is doing, not what we could dream it probably could do. And for example, when it comes to fishing uh, in, uh, in the oceans, uh, the EU has been very uh, instrumental in uh, making uh, uh, promoting big fishing and, and uh, depleting uh, the oceans from the fish and, and fighting the small fishes which could be the basis of sustainable fishing. I don't know much about Austria, but when we talk about Eastern Europe, I think we should uh, consider that the European Union has had an enormously negative impact in the development of the societies of Eastern Europe. When they, these people, these countries were uh, allowed to entrant go into the European Union, they were asked to uh, adapt, to harmonize the systems completely to the European Union. They should privatize everything. The, actually, the result was that, that all the bank se sector in Eastern Europe is not in control of Western European banks, mainly German banks, but also Austrian banks and Danish banks and other Western European banks, that the land was privatized so, so in Eastern Europe, what could be basis for an ecological uh, uh, way of farming would probably be smaller farming or collective farming in some way, but what we have is uh, privatizations which have uh, developed into uh, big capitalist pig farms, for example, with 50 or 100,000 pigs, uh, where they are polluting uh, very, very much in countries like Poland and Ukraine and, and other countries in Eastern Europe. And this is, uh, and this, all this privatization, all this uh, negative way of developing is actually promoted by the European Union. We have to know that before we are thinking about how the EU could uh, contribute to the solution. When we talk about, for example, the European Union is uh, against any kind of state structures which are produ producing things, controlling things, that means that they are uh, uh, and they are promoting, for example, private uh, uh, traffic uh, in contradiction to collective transport. So this also contributes to a lot of cities in Eastern Europe today has been uh, full of uh, not only plastic but also cars so make the uh, transport around very difficult and life not much easier. I think we have to have a real knowledge about this European Union before we are, uh, and not uh, just thinking what we should think it should be but what it actually is. Um, another way to look at that is if we look at the Greek experience uh, in the European Union, we all know that uh, Syriza, that Greece was in a debt trap, and uh, they were uh, they were into sort of what was it called? Uh, uh, they, they had to sign uh, the European Union to follow a neoliberal politics, and Syriza came to power with the claim that they would stop this. And they tried very hard to renegotiate all these uh, agreements with the European Union. Not agreements, what is that they call it? Dictates. Memorandum. Memorandum, thank you. The memoranda from the European Union, from the Troika, also from the International Monetary Foundation and the World Bank, they tried really hard 
to renegotiate that. And it was completely impossible for them to get any understanding from the top of the European Union. And uh, this leads, uh, to say it short, uh, they won the election in 2015 in order to renegotiate this, uh, this uh, memoranda and to fight uh, the dictates from the Troika. They tried very hard, they did not succeed, uh, and there, therefore they uh, submitted somehow more or less. They were uh, forced to follow a neoliberal politics from the European Union, and then uh, it, is, it must be say, said, I think, that they lost the election in 2019, just a week ago, because they did not really uh, dare to say no to the European Union, to refuse to follow the dictates. They did not really dare to lead the rebellion, uh, even though there was a public referendum where they actually got a mandate from the Greek population to, uh, to fight the dictates and to refuse the referendum. But here, so this is an important lesson for the European Union uh, left wing. I think this is one of the reasons that we are not so relevant for the a lot of broad masses of uh, Europe today, that they don't see us as a clear alternative to the, to the political uh, uh, mainstream of but, but here I just wanted to stress that this is, that the Greek experience is really showing us a lot about the functioning of the European Union. And that if you see uh, today who is going to be the new chairman of the European Union, Ursula von Leyen from Germany, she is hardly uh, somebody we can trust uh, going into the front of progressive solutions. Um, I just uh, uh, have no, I think I will stop here. It, it must be enough. Okay, thank you very much. Ringraziamo Dal passo la parola a Veronica. It's okay. Um, I will also uh, continue this European Union program. I, I, must, I must say, in 2004, when my country was uh, entering the European Union, that we had referendum, I was voting yes. Now I'm not sure if I will do it again, I must say. For many reasons. Uh, one of, this, one of it, it is that, that basically uh, the, the European Union was for central, central Eastern European uh, part of the region, basically, really the way to the periphery. This all it is bringing in uh, underdevelopment, uh, ecological troubles, uh, really what we can say this, I think, I can understand that European Union is actually maybe a very ambivalent actor, maybe there are some standards which is pushing, but it is also allowing a lot of very negative things to happen in, in the environment in, in Central Eastern Europe. One of the part of transformation was uh, creation of the uh, big farms. We have Prime Minister now, who is an uh, example of the uh, agrarian uh, agricultural politics uh, after the 1989. He made his fortune, uh, basically, one of the way how he made the fortune was the agriculture. Um, the problem with this European Union also is next that the integration, it's nice to, to say about integration, but the integration of the Central Eastern Europe was based on inequality which were basically in case they were involved in the and there is no way out of it so far. That you, cannot, you cannot fight it. For example, in agri agriculture politics uh, or policies, uh, since the accession, within the accession agreement, there is already put an inequal position for the Central Eastern European farmers because the France and Spain and these big countries and agriculture wanted to have better conditions. So they created the worst conditions for, for the Eastern Central Europe. If we stay only in the agricultural sphere, which is, as I believe, very important for the, for the uh, let's say, ecology and sustainability. But let's go out of the Central Eastern Europe. Let's see the more global picture. A few weeks ago, it was a great uh, celebration. European Union understand trade uh, agreement with Mercosur. It's for Latin American countries. Uh, there is predominant, absolutely 